Yeah, what you reading? Oh, just looking through this hymnal. No big deal. Really? I don't think so. Aha! Yep, you caught me. I was reading a comic book. Wait a second. What are you really reading? Nothing. I mean, this comic book. I like the pictures. Aha! I knew it! You guys, Leo's reading about physics. <laughs> what? Why? You don't have to, Leo. We aren't even old enough to start learning physics. Leo's learning physics because he's in the gifted program at school. He learns about that stuff for fun. <gasps> I do not. I don't know how that textbook got there. I hate studying. Then why is your name written on the cover of the book? A forgery. Speaking of playing extreme hide and seek, we should totally play extreme hide and seek. Wait, what? One, two, three, not, not it. it. Not it. Uh... 97, 98, 99, 100. All right, here I come. Leo, it's extreme hide and seek. You have to yell extreme before you come looking. Extreme, here I come. <laughs> extreme! You know, saying extreme while you do something doesn't really make it extreme. I don't think you're saying it right then, because help! it- Help! Extreme help! Extreme See, help! she's doing it right. That sounds extreme. <laughs> Did you hear that? It sounds like Ruby is in trouble. Somebody! Anybody! Extreme help! 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 Come on! Where are you guys? Come on! Ruby? Down here! Where are you? Under the trap door! It's stuck! All right, Ruby, just stay calm. You don't want to run out of air any faster. Not helping me, me! I don't think it's locked. It's just really heavy. Oh! Leo, where are you going? Guys! Guys! Stay calm, Ruby. <laughs> this. Ruby, do you know any jokes? Get me out of here! All we need is a lever and fulcrum to apply force correctly. <laughs> Ruby, are you all right? Oh. oh, thank you, Leo. Oh, uh, how did you do that? <laughs> it was just basic physics. It was basically awesome is what it was. That was so I mean, great. It was great. Really great. Really What are we gonna do? Bert is sitting at our table. Why do we need a table? We need to hold a meeting for the welcome committee. Otherwise, we won't be able to assemble a care package for that refugee family that moved to our town. And we can't start unless I have a hard surface to bang my gavel on. Why don't we just ask him to move? Uh, are you kidding? He's a weird, mysterious outsider. With a checkered past. <laughs> Get out! Mimi, go tell him to move. I'm not talking to him. He'll go talk to him. I'm not talking to him. Well, somebody has to talk to him. Fine! I have to do everything. Hi, Ruby. Look, Bert, I don't want any trouble. What? Okay, just back off and lower your voice. Uh, I'm sorry. Sarcasm will get you nowhere. Uh, I... Listen, we are the official welcome committee, and we need this table to plan for a care package we're giving to a refugee family that just moved here. Oh, they just moved here? Maybe I could help. My parents' business... I'm sorry, we cannot permit the presence of outsiders in our efforts to assist outsiders. It would break the committee charter. Oh, okay. I, I guess I'll move then. That'd be great, thanks. Ah! Don't eat me! I, I wasn't! Ha! Listen, Bert, we can't make outsiders in our town feel welcome if you won't leave us alone. But uh, my family's business... Don't it... think I don't know how to use this. Wow. 
I'm not really sure about how to go back. Stop Hey, Bert. Hi, Leo. What are you doing out here? They needed the Sunday school room for their welcome committee meeting, and... Uh, they kicked you out? Well, it kind of felt like I was in the way. They kicked you out. I keep trying to tell them that my parents own a furniture store and could donate some things for that family's apartment. But they never let me finish a sentence. You can just taste the irony, can't you? People working so hard to reach out to someone while simultaneously turning their backs on someone else. They'll see what they're doing eventually. Give them time. They'll come around. It sure is taking a long time. A long, lonely time. <clears throat> What's that you're working on? Oh, just finding parts for this new invention I'm working on. Hey, you want to help? I'd like that, Leo. I'd like that a lot. Come on. Hey, Leo, what is that? Oh, it's my new invention, the Snow Thrower 5000. It can clear a driveway ten times faster than a conventional snowblower. Ooh, awesome! Let me try! No, wait! Whoops. Wow. Way to go, Gabe. It was an accident. There are no accidents, Gabe. Oh no, it's Janitor Jerry. He'll be furious. Well, Gabe, you just have to own up to your mistake. Take the medicine, face the... <laughs> or leap into the bushes. No, wait. Janitor Jerry, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. <gasps> wait, it was me. It was me. I destroyed the shed. Leo is innocent. Leo is innocent! I should have confessed sooner. Why didn't you speak up, Gabe? There's only one thing to do now. Voluntarily exile myself in the terrifying woods behind the church. Hey, Chad, have you seen Gabe? Gabe? Yeah, he's supposed to be at the soundtrack for our big Advent handbell performance. Gabe's gone. He's been a fugitive on the run ever since he vaporized the tool shed and pinned it on Leo. So young. I threw it all away. Hmm. <gasps> Gabe? <gasps> Gabe? <laughs> Gabe! No! I don't deserve to live in society! But you'll miss our event! I know I should repent! I am repenting! No! Event! You'll miss playing handbells for Advent! I'm in the woods to repent! Advent! I am! I'm repenting! <gasps> Gabe, you have to come back. I can't go back. I must hide in shame to repent for my sins. But I thought repenting is part of preparing the way for Jesus. And? Well, how can you prepare the way when you're hiding in the woods? Well, I, uh... You need to turn this around. Jerry put Leo on nativity scene duty as punishment. Hee-haw. Okay, Mimi. I'll turn it around. I'll come back. Yay! Just as soon as Chet comes round to check his snares. This is it, I guess.
Gone for several weeks with your family to help the Houses for Humans project in a far-off country. It's so crazy that you're going to be building humans, Ruby. We'll be building houses. Oh. Well, that's still a little crazy, isn't it? Well, I'm going to miss you guys. I'll send postcards and... Hey, where's Leo? It's not fair, Pat. Who would believe anything that phony? Found him! Give praise and thanks to the Lord. Hey, Leo, Ruby is about to leave for her Houses for Humans trip. We won't see her till after Advent is over. So, enjoy all the fun Advent stuff for me while I'm gone, Leo. Don't even get me started on that phony Advent is so full of hope stuff. I am not in the mood. Come on, Pat. Let's go wait it out in my lair. See you guys next spring. Hallelujah. Did Leo seem upset to you? He always gets a little down around the holidays, but he's got Pat, the praise and thanks robot, to keep him company. That thing just repeats a bunch of worship catchphrases. And it likes dodgeball. Hmm. Huh. You think Leo needs more than that? I'll be back. See there, Pat? This is a graphic display of poverty and hunger during the summer. It's all over the place. And here is a graphic display of poverty and hunger during the Advent season when everything is supposed to be so much better. You see? They're the same. Nothing changes. Would you like to play dodgeball? Don't try to change the subject, Pat. Leo? In here. What do you want? I want to say goodbye to you, duh. Fine. Bye. But look at this map. Look how awful and unfair things are all over the world. Yeah, things can be pretty crummy. How can the world be so unfair? Why doesn't God just fix it? I don't think that's how God works. Why not? Did you ever think like maybe God wants us to fix it? But people aren't doing enough to fix things. Some people aren't ready to hear God's call. I, I didn't want to miss Christmas break to go build houses for people in another country. Why is that my problem? Praise God Pat, for the- please, I'm having a moment. But then I started thinking, what if everyone thought like that? What kind of world would that be? It's up to us, Leo. We have to fix it, one person at a time. Or you can hide out in your underground lair and moan about how unfair the world is. Your choice. I've got a plane to catch. Hey, Ruby. Thanks for what you said. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm pretty smart, Leo. I'll see you after Advent. And put some sun lamps in this place. It gets depressing in the winter. Finished. The last page of the Bible. Theologitomaton has been programmed, Pat. Would you like to play dodgeball? Not right now. Right now, we need to test the Theologitomaton's knowledge of the Bible. What is your query? Let's start with an easy one. Who built the ark? Processing. Noah and his family. Correct. Glory to God in the highest. Now, let's ramp it up. Who was Jesus' mother? Processing. Mary. Correct. Who was his father? Processing. God. Okay, let me rephrase. Who was Mary's husband at the time of Jesus' birth? Processing. Processing. No one. What? Uh, uh, explain yourself, Theologiotomaton. The one you call Mary was unwed at the time of the virgin birth. She was engaged to Joseph, but they were not yet married. That's not possible. Let me see. Okay, um, uh, decree went out from emperor. Um, world to be registered. I am incapable of error. Quiet! Ah, he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged. Engaged? Do you know what this means? Praise and thanks. No, Pat. They did things completely out of order. The formula is, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby in the baby carriage. That cuts dodgeball. What do I do with this? Should I tell anyone? Ah! I miss worship! I see now. I must bear this secret myself. I cannot tell anyone. They can never know. They were not married!
married. Mary and Joseph were not married. Mary was the unwed mother of God's son. <gasps> Look, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Yeah, we know. We heard all about it during worship today. You did? Yeah, it was really interesting. All the social pressures Mary had to deal with. Wait, so you all know that Joseph and Mary weren't married? Of course. But it just doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Why would God do that to Mary? I mean, she had to tell Joseph, her future husband, that she was pregnant and it wasn't his. Why would Mary just go along with such an impossible situation? I guess she had faith. Faith in what? That God would see her through it. And God did. Oh, totally did. God made the impossible possible. But it's the principle of the thing. How could... Would you... I... Oh, I need to sit down. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah, just think how Mary must have felt. Not helping, Mimi. That's not so bad. Gabe, Leo, super great news. You know how I've been sad that Ruby, my best friend, is gone over the holidays? Ruby's your best friend? Well, I have a solution. I just made an imaginary friend. Her name is Jamila. Really? Um, well, it's very nice to meet you, Mimi's imaginary friend. <laughs> Don't be silly, Gabe. Jamila's not standing there. She's right over there. What? Uh... Oh, I almost forgot. I've got a present for you, Jamila. Be right back, imaginary friend. Hello, and how are you both today? You see her too, right? Is it possible that Mimi's imagination is so strong she can make us see things? Uh, no, I am sorry. My family just moved to here and I am attending international school. Why does Mimi think you're imaginary? Yes, I am very sorry. I understood it to be a custom to refer to new students as imaginary, but I am now thinking that imaginary mean the same thing here as it does in my country. So, where are you from? Here we go, Jamila! I got you some knitting supplies because I know you love knitting. I do? You do! Uh, actually, I have never... Hey, maybe you could help me out with my new invention. How are you at quantum physics? Uh, well... And you know what? We're having a bake sale to help pay for our last bake sale. You can make some pastries that your country is known for. Um, yes, yes, of course. All of those things sound very much. If you will just please excuse me for a moment. Oh. Hello! Oh! Uh, I am so, so sorry. I did not mean to interrupt while you were building... Your hang glider. Hi, I'm Roxanne. I am Jamila. I am new. Nice to meet you, Jamila. Sorry about the mess. I'm starting a hang gliding club next week, so I really need to start learning how to fly one. You are starting a hang gliding club, and you do not know how to hang glide? That's how I roll. But uh, people in your club will expect that you already know how to hang glide. They might. People have all kinds of expectations, but I know I can never live up to all of them. All I can really do is trust that God will help me do the best that I can. So I do not need to worry about what people expect. I just need to trust God to help me do what I can. Hmm. Perhaps you are right. It's been known to happen. Now if you'll excuse me. There you are. You forgot your yarn and knitting needles. Yes, hello Mimi. I must, to be honest with you, I do not know how to knit, but I look forward to trying it with you, my new friend. That's so nice, Jamila! You're the best imaginary friend I've ever had! Okay, but here's the real question. Why did Jesus come to us as something as boring as a person? Boring? Yeah, why be a person if you could be anything? Why, like a camel? Or a pony? Or a fiddler crab? Or a pony? You're all thinking too small. Jesus can do anything, so why not be born as like a 200 foot giant that can be heard by everyone on earth when he speaks? That would be impressive. Totally. Oh, and what if he also... 
What was that? There. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. But really, it's a bird. I think he's trying to get back outside. I would imagine so. This is not the best place for a bird. I've got this. There, now it can fly out. Hey, over here, bird. Well, I'm out of ideas. Anyone else? You're thinking too small. I have just the thing. Where'd Leo go? The bird's name is Ralph. <gasps> Behold, the Bird Rescue 5000 Power Suit. Jet boots on. This should only take a second. Activate helpful arrows. Attention, bird. Follow my helpful arrows. They will lead you to the open window. No, not that way. That way. No, no. That way. Ah, that way. Buddy, follow the helpful arrows. Ah! The bird clearly doesn't want our help. I think he wants to live here now, and we should respect its wishes. But he's gonna hurt himself in here. So the bird did want out? Of course! Well, then why didn't my power suit work? Because it was terrifying. Oh. Like the birds in my backyard always say, sometimes you have to speak to people in a language they understand. The birds in your backyard seem pretty smart, Mimi. Yeah, about some things. They're terrible at crosswords. You are going to wash your hands, right? I mean, you touched a bird. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. A wind of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. And God said, let there be lights in the sky to separate the day from the night. And it was so. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. And God saw that it was good.
And God, as I'm sure you already know, part of my homework this week is to do some kind of community service. So, what should I do? I mean, you know better than I do where I'd be the most help. <laughs> so if you could, just tell me what you want me to do. I'll take it from there. Thanks, God. All right, God, I'm ready to go. Just tell me who to help. Hi, Ruby. Can't talk now, Gabe. I've got to study for the social studies test, and I'm really struggling on my own. Oh, man, yeah, I know how tough schoolwork can be. Not social studies, of course, since I'm actually really, really good at social studies. But I know what you mean. Good luck. God, I just want to say how excited I am for whatever... <sighs> Wow, this bulletin board is a mess. Oh, morning, Leo. No time, Gabe. One of the water pipes in the boiler room burst and it's flooding the church. It's a disaster. That sounds like a lot for one person to try and fix. Hope you can figure it out, buddy. Yeah. Huh, well, it's 10.15 already. But take your time, God. <laughs> All right, God, this is getting silly. Just tell me what you want me to do. Ah, social study! I mean, you spoke directly to Samuel, and I'm a pretty easy guy to talk to. Ah! Whoa. Sorry, God, I'm trying to listen to you, but I keep getting distracted by someone who needs help. I mean, how am I supposed to... Oh. <laughs> Ruby, hey, how about I help you study for your social studies test in uh, about an hour? Um, yeah, that would be amazing. Great. Can you hold this kitten, please? Wait, where are you going now? Help! I can't get down! I can't get down! I hear you, Leo! I'm coming! I'll see you in a bit, Ruby. Y yeah, see ya. Thanks, God. Mm -hmm.